Okay. Uh, on the 5th of November, 1970, our leaders, uh, General Blackburn, General uh, Manor, and uh, Bull Simons, uh, were ready to go to Saigon to brief General Abrams uh, about uh, the force that was prepared to uh, conduct a rescue operation in his theater of operations. Because he had absolutely no idea that something like that was happening because of the total secrecy in which we operated. Uh, on the way to Saigon, they stopped uh, at PACAF headquarters, the Pacific uh, uh, Command that was headed by uh, Admiral McCain. He already knew that the operation was planned, but he didn't know exactly when. And uh, of course, they uh, briefed him on it. He fully supported it. And he offered his uh, personal aircraft, C-118, to uh, fly them the rest of the way uh, to Saigon. And uh, he also uh, notified in a secret message uh, that uh, three important visitors are coming uh, to visit General Abrams uh, and that he would learn the details about what this is all about. So they come to Saigon and uh, uh, General Abrams uh, was ready for them. He and uh, Lucius Clay, who was uh, his deputy, he was uh, three-star Air Force. And uh, uh, one of their, uh, 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 I don't know who the executive officer was, but there were, I believe, only three of them that sat in on a briefing and uh, it was a total surprise to all of them. And they were very enthusiastic uh, about the plan. And Abram said, okay, what do you need? Uh, and he looked at Bull Simons and Bull Simons said, nothing. Uh, I don't need anything. I have all the men, all the bullets, all the armaments. We are totally uh, prepared. And uh, well, he was surprised at that. And he said, while you're doing this, uh, who are you really working for? And uh, they informed me, well, uh, uh, we're here from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. We are working for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, so uh, we will not be under your command. And you know, he said, well, all right, <laughs> uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, they have the priority. So then he focused on General Manor, what do you need? I said, oh, yes, we do need lots of help. Uh, we have all the pilots, all the crew members uh, for the aircraft that uh, uh, will be flying. These will be helicopter pilots, A1E pilots. We're bringing our own C-130s uh, uh, with their crews. And we're going to require uh, some uh, high altitude protection over Sante. And uh, it will not just be protection, but also a decoy. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that the uh, North Vietnamese employ missiles instead of MiGs because MiGs would uh, uh, cut us all up uh, flying helicopters and slow flying aircraft over Sante. So uh, we require that protection. He said, great, he said, you, you got it. Okay, so what do you need from the Navy? Uh, well, uh, we're going to visit uh, the carrier task force in the Gulf of Tonkin uh, in brief uh, uh, Admiral Bar chart about his support because we would like to have a uh, few Navy aircraft flying over the Gulf, over Haiphong uh, to uh, have North Vietnamese focused attention on the attack which may be coming from the east. Great. So, 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 let me ask you, so when was the last time the Navy had flown over Haiphong and, and uh, uh, that area. Okay, there was a, there was a bombing pause that was in effect uh, almost two years. President Johnson started. Right. Uh, well, so that's just because that's it, the most significant part, right? Is that the the Navy hadn't crossed the beach yeah for that's about a, oh, two the, years. So the Navy was active. They, they were uh, the dividing line for mm -hmm. no bombing was 19th parallel. So they. Uh, had the rest of South uh, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam, uh, Laos, and Ho Chi Minh Trail, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so on. So uh, the the Navy was doing what they were allowed to uh, with that bombing right. restriction. But the, the, the reason I ask the question is that the people that see this video, um, younger people, most people my age, I'm 52, will 
their knowledge of the Vietnam War and what the Navy did in the air war over North Vietnam unfortunately comes from movies they've seen. Yes. Right? And exactly. so they amalgamate the, the coolest movies they've seen or like Flight of the Intruder or something like that. Uh -huh. and, and they think in their mind, oh, the Navy was just routinely going up into North Vietnam and, you know, Hanoi and yeah. Haiphong and bombing the hell out of them. But you and I know that that wasn't true. There were, there were times that their hands were tied and they were restricted uh, from yes. going up there. So the most significant thing I think about the Navy's involvement, it, it was um, it was actually the thing that worked, I think, okay. in most in your favor, was that they hadn't been over the beach in, in quite a long That's time. That's right. And uh, another thing, uh, David, uh, Navy was not getting enough credit for what they were doing in the war. Right. Uh, why? Because they were operating from the Yankee station in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no newspaper people uh, and right. cameramen uh, with them mm -hmm. like they were down south. So much was happening down south, like Navy, oh, yeah, they were providing support and, right. and, uh, and all of that. The uh, only thing that you were hearing about Navy, hey, uh, another two Navy pilots were shot down or uh, so on, you know? Right. Uh, and weren't we right on that edge of the Vietnamization of the war? So that was kind of the, oh, we're, yeah. we're, they were selling the, you know, the administration was selling the, hey, we're, the Vietnamese are taking over the war, uh, we're that, back in That's, out of that's right. And uh, war was not going uh, very well, and uh, neither were the peace negotiations in mm -hmm. Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. that was. No, well, but that's, that's, a, that's very interesting because, in a way, uh, the fact that the Navy had not been up there uh, dropping metal on targets actually worked quite well, even though they didn't actually d drop hard bombs on targets. They feigned dropping hard bombs on targets, but it got a huge reaction from yeah. the North Vietnamese. Yeah, okay. So let me see. That, that, let me ask you, do, you, do you think that that was something that was calculated? On the part of the raid planners that they well, thought? No, no, uh, I'm, I'm getting to that right now. All right. Uh, see, all our planning uh, in Vietnam, in uh, Florida, uh, we, this is what we had in the back of our minds, which we got from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, that Navy will provide, will participate once you are ready, uh, once, once you are, uh, once you have President's approval Mm -hmm. to do it because uh, like I said Johnson had uh, started this uh, no bombing north of 19th parallel right uh, so that that was uh, his executive order mm -hmm. this executive order needed to be either canceled by uh, President Nixon or uh, changed to allow uh, one operation which he did authorize mm -hmm. surgical operation into Sante to rescue uh, our prisoners. No bombing, no collateral damage, mm -hmm. okay? Now, uh, I mentioned this before in, in the interview before you came in. Mm -hmm. uh, 1970 was a critical year. Uh, this was November. Uh, President Nixon was elected in November. <laughs> and so he, he had to, uh, you know, that that was part of, part of the delay. Why we were delayed for well, one month, uh, because we were supposed to go in October, but they, they delayed uh, our operation for one month until after the election. So th there were um, th that fact, political factor plus uh, peace talks, and uh, Henry Kissinger got involved anyway. So so just curious that you brought it up. So. On the heels of the of the raid, I'm sure, uh, no doubt, you guys were uh, crushed and disappointed that it was a dry hole. Mm -hmm. How many years did it take for you guys to realize? Because I would have surmised, if I were in your position, and I realized that politics were involved and there was a, like a month delay, I would have wondered, like, well, if we went in October, would they have been there? How many years did it take? For you guys to understand that the that the prisoners oh, had been for, moved for, in July, for, for, for was for it us. all the way to 1973, or yeah. was yeah. for us? Uh, we we were so dispersed mm 
Mm -hmm. And we were not allowed to discuss our uh, top secret operation, any any, uh, details or equipment we used or tactics we used. Mm -hmm. And we were dispersed throughout the world, not communicating with each other. So uh, we did not realize how good uh, the raid was for the POWs until they came home and told us. But the question was, as as a participant in the raid, Personally, for you, how long did it take you to realize that, it, that uh, or did you ever consider immediately that, man, if we had gone last month in October, we we might have got them? How long did it take? Did, no. Was it was it until they were repatriated in 1973? Well, we we knew we knew that they were gone at least two months uh, before the raid. So uh, the, going in October wouldn't have made any difference. The result would have when been. When did you know that? When, uh, when the POWs came home and uh, Ross Perot uh, gave uh, Operation Homecoming Party mm-hmm. yeah. in uh, San Francisco, uh, the Raiders were invited uh, to attend. Right. I couldn't because I, I was... Uh, so, so it was, it was 1973. So, 73, you... yeah, that's when the w- word came out. And, uh, well, and it came very slowly uh, because... Uh, that the uh, PO, returning POWs were contro- controlled. So much information uh, mm-hmm. and their debriefing was held uh, as secret. Right. Uh, but uh, bits and pieces said, said oh yeah, their li- we knew that right away. Their livelihood uh, had improved. Uh, but the details about how they organized, how they formed the fourth allied mm-hmm. wing and all of that, yeah. uh, uh, we, we still don't know uh, 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 minor details about that, how they were able to communicate, how they were able to uh, forge uh, together and you know bring themselves up so they could come home uh, mm-hmm. with honor. Uh, that uh, well, you, you, you talk to uh, uh, the POW leaders and uh, mm-hmm. they hold that very dear. They, uh, they're, they're proud of what they did. Uh, but uh, let, let me uh, continue with... Uh,